Today we are going to talk about exponential function context and data modeling. So given two points on the curve and of, of an exponential function, we're going to use the TI-84 plus calculator to find the equation. Okay, here are the steps listed of how to type this into the calculator and then to how to find the equation using your calculator. So number six says, using a graphing calculator to find the exponential function equation that includes the points 3, 18, 0.2 and 794.7. So um, part A says to find the equation using the steps above. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so I've got my calculator. We're going to hit stat, edit. We're going to clear our list one and our list two by hitting clear. Okay, and then in list one, I'm going to put the x coordinates, so three and seven. And then in list two, we're going to enter the y coordinates. So 18.2 and 94.7. Okay. All right, now um, I'm going to hit stat, go to calc. We're going to run that exponential regression. And then we're going to press enter. Okay. The screen displays a list of X, the X list is list one, Y list is list two, and then we have frequent lists and store regression equation and calculate. You want to arrow down to where it says store regression, and we're going to hit um, VARS, which is right here on your calculator. It's right next to the third line. Hit VARS, and then you're going to go over to Y VARS. And then it says to hit function. And then you're going to select Y1. That means it's going to go into the Y1 equation. It's going to be your Y1 equation in your Y screen. Okay. And then we're going to hit enter and calculate. Okay. The screen displays A and B of the exponential equation. So that's where we get that from. And then the graph will be displayed in the graph window. So let's go ahead and write down the equation and I'll show you where it is in the graph window. So the equation is y equals 5.283 is my a value. b is 1.510 to the power of x. If I hit y equals, oh, I had another equation, I know that one. If you guys hit y equals, notice that the equation's in there. Times 1.5, blah, 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 to the power of x. Okay. And if you hit graph, oh, hold on. You guys can see that graph when we hit. It's still spinning, sorry. Even six. There we go, here's the right picture, okay? So that's how you store the store it in your calculator, the equation. So using that bars button, okay? All right, part B, sketch the graph on the grid at the right, so. Um, let's see, we've got the two points. We know that the function is going to go up like that. My y-intercept um, is at 5.283. I'm gonna plot that right there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and sketch this graph. That's what the graph looks like. We have a wire, or I'm sorry, a uh, Horizontal oscillator at y equals zero, so I get that in there too. Okay, so we sketch the graph and the grid at the right. Label the y-intercept. The y-intercept is zero five point two eight three. I plug in zero for x. I get that. Or remember, you can look at the table of values. Zero five point two eight three. Okay. All right. And then it says find the value for where f of x equals 50. So we want when the y value is 50, we want to find x. So I'm going to go into my y equals screen and put 50 into y2. And I'm just going to find the interception. So to do that, um, I need to change my window to above my y max to above 50. So I'm going to say 60. see if they intersect. I don't know if they do. We'll see. They should because this one goes to 7, so I could go to 10. Yep, there we go. Okay, so second trace. Boom. 
intersect, first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guys, return. All right, looks like the intersect at 5.45150, so x is about, 5.451. Okay? Alright. Um, now we have the natural base E. Okay? The number E, remember, E is a number. Okay? It's not a variable in math. It is a number. So the number E is a convenient choice for many exponential applications. This irrational number is used as the base of the function, like that, where e is 2.718, blah, blah, blah. So the e button on your calculator, if you can find it, is second in the division sign. And it types it in. Okay. All right. The graph of the natural exponential function shown at the right has the basic characteristics as the graph of the function y equals z to the x. Notice that e is z. It is important to note that in the function f of x equals e to the x, e is the constant and x is the variable because e is a number, it is not a variable. So approximating uh, the number e. Um, so the number e is defined as the number that the expression below approaches as, and approaches positive infinity. In calculus, this number is expressed using limit notation, okay? So this is how the limit as n approaches positive infinity, that formula equals e. So let's explore the number e. We're going to complete the table to see that the values approach e, all right? So I'm going to plug in these numbers right here into my calculator. So 1 plus 1,000. Oh, I'm sorry, 1 over 1,000. Now let me look real quick, see if I can have that, sorry. To the power of 1,000, 2.7169, Okay. And then I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to put in 10,000 now. Yep, it's 10,000. Okay. I'm going to do it again, do 100,000. And one more time, I'm going to plug in a million. Okay. So as you guys notice, as these go to positive infinity, these get closer and closer to this 2.718281828. Like you can see that these get closer and closer to that value. It says graph the function to verify this, okay? Um, let's see, so this is this formula right here. Um, so if I plug this in the calculator, I get zero, one, and I also get one, two. You guys can plug this into your Y1 um, one screen and see that. And then the graph would look like this. because y2 is e, and e is the 2.7, which would go right here. Like I said, you can type this into your calculator to see that if you would like. Okay, I'm not going to right now, but you can. All right. <clears throat> 
exponential growth and decay models. A sub zero is the original or the initial amount for over um, a time of t, and as k is a constant representing a rate. Okay, so we've got these formulas right here. Okay, so your initial k is a constant, t is your time. If k is greater than zero, the function models the amount where it's a growing entity. If k is less than zero, okay, the model represents a size and decaying entity. The atmospheric pressure, so let's look at this example. The atmospheric pressure P on a commercial airline decreases as the plane in height increases. The pressure is measured in milliliters of mercury, millimeters of mercury, mercury is HG, and is related to the height H in the kilometers above sea level. This relationship can be modeled by this function here. It says, what is the atmospheric pressure at a height of 4.5 kilometers above 3, which is about 3 miles? So, um, H is the height in kilometers above sea level. We have the height above sea level in kilometers, okay? And it's what is the atmospheric pressure, and the atmospheric pressure is P, okay? So, I'm just going to plug in 4.5 and 4 H right here. Oops, 160 power of negative 0 0.145 times 4.5. That gives us about 395.764 millimeters of mercury. Okay? All right, part B. Find the pressure when the airline reaches a height of 10 kilometers, which is about, say, 22 miles. Okay, so we want to find the pressure when the height's about 10 kilometers. So again, you're just plugging in 10 and for H because we want to find the pressure. So 160 E to the negative 0 0.145 to 10. So that's about 178.273 millimeters of mercury. Okay. All right. Let's look at exponential decay and how carbon dating is used to determine the age of artifacts and fossils up to 80,000 years old. The method is based on finding the percentage of carbon-14 remaining in an object. Carbon-14 is known to decay exponentially with a half-life of 5,715 years. So that means every 7 or 5,715 years, you use that, the carbon loses a half-life. So this is your K. That's your constant. Okay. This means that the half-life of a substance is the time required for half of the sample of the given sample to disintegrate. Okay. All right. So we've got this half-life equation um, right here. Okay. Uh, let's see here. With half-life being the natural log of two divided by k. So how I'm going to set this up. It number nine. It says the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 24 years. The sample has 5.8 grams present initially, okay? So, write a model, so an equation, to express the amount of substance remaining as a function of time of t. So, um, we know that the half-life is 24 years. So, half-life is equal to 24. The natural log of 2 over k. So, we need to find... Um, what k is for this scenario, okay? This k is for specifically carbon-14, but we don't know what this substance is. It just says a random substance, so we have to find what the k value is for that. So k 
Um, so 24k equals the natural log of 2 if I multiply both sides by k. And then I'm going to say k is the natural log of 2 divided by 24 to get k by itself, which is about, let's see here, the natural log button is below log right here. You'll see that right there. Okay, natural log of 2, and I'm going to divide that by 24. So 0 0.029-ish, okay? So my equation would be A of T equals, it currently has uh, 5.8 grams initially, so 5.8 base E, my K was 0 0.029. Now we're doing the half-life, and so um, the substance is disintegrating. So it's got to be a negative k value there to the power of t. Okay, we want to know how much substance is remaining, so you're losing the substance, so you're decreasing by that k value, so you do have to say that this negative, so just be careful there. And then part b says, when will there be less than one gram remaining? So when, as is asking for the time, when there is only one gram left, so I'm going to say one equals 5.8, using my 0.029t and I'm just going to plug this in for y1 and this in for y2 in my calculator Okay, so I'm going to change my y and my x to like, I don't know, 30. But I need to change my x and my x to something bigger because clearly it is going this way. And the graph's decaying, the red graph is the decay. All right, it looks like they cross about there. Let's figure out what that is. Um, looks like no one wasted. All right, there's my intersection. So it intersects at 60.616, one. So when will there be less than one gram remaining? At about 60.616 years. Okay, that's when it will be one. So less than one will be um, past 60. So about 61 years. At 61 years, we will definitely be less than one gram. So, and you guys can always look at the table as well. Man, you guys are slow forever. We're in the threes right now. Ooh. You can see that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so at 60, you're still at, at least a little over a gram, but at 61 years, you're for sure less than, um, you have less than one gram remaining, okay? All righty. And compound interest, okay? You guys did this in Algebra 2. Um, compound interest is interest computed on the original investment plus any accumulated interest. If the initial sum of money, which is called your principal, P, is invested at an annual percentage rate in the decimal form, compounded once each year, we know that the accumulated value A of T can be found using this formula. Some banking institutions compound at different time intervals, such as monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, and continuously. So this equation is used when you are compounded once a year. The compound interest formula, this guy right here, is used when you have compoundings at different time intervals. So monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, they can use this equation, okay? Um, if it's compounding continuously, continuously compounded, you use the equation with E in it, okay? Um, 
So after two years, the balance A of T in the account with the principal P in the annual interest of R in decimal form is given by these formulas. So P, 1, R, and T are all the same. This N value is based off of how many compoundings you have a year. So like if it says monthly, there's 12 months in a year, so N is 12. Quarterly, there's four quarters in a year, so N is four. Semi-annually, that means that would happen twice a year, so N would be two. Okay, and then like I said, if you're doing compounding continuously, you're going to use this formula here with E. So number 10 says, suppose that you win a writer's competition at the start of the ninth graph that deposited 50,000 in an account that pays 6.25 interest, annual interest, uh, compounded quarterly. How much would it be in the account when you enter college four years later? All right, so we have, we deposited $5,000, so that's my initial amount. And it says how much will be in the account, so we wanna know how much is left over. Okay, how much, we start with what's in the account, P, okay? And then um, this is compounded when we're compounding continuously, which means we're going to use this equation, continuously compounded. So that's why I'm going to use this equation here. So I have P, E is a number, right, not a variable. R is going to be 0 0.0625 when I'm in my decimal, okay, to the power of T. And we want to know how much will be in the account four years later. So I'm going to plug in four for T. You have about six thousand four hundred and twenty dollars and thirteen cents. Make sure you round it two decimals because we're dealing with money. All right. Um, you're going to have some homework problems that use the. Um, it will say like compounded monthly, so make sure you're using this formula. And so you're going to use n is twelve, or if it says compounded quarterly, then you're going to use this formula and say that n is four and so on. So just pay attention to the wording of what it's being compounded by, and that will tell you what formula to use. Okay, and yep, that is all. All right, good luck, and let me know if you guys have any questions.